I'm not saying that we don't lie. But the white man lies almost for no reason at all. Come on. A liar and a murderer. Now he was taught by Yaqub how to master us with a system of tricks and lies. And that boy is the same today as he was. He's full of tricks. Come on. Got you doing it. He's a tricky dude. He can't help himself. A liar, a murderer, a deceiver. Even though I'm an African, I've come to love the teachings of Minister Louis Farrakhan, his perspective in life, his activism, and the way he sees the world through his own lens. I've come across an interesting video which I want us to watch. I will be back. I uh, just got off the plane maybe less than a half hour ago after having spoken this morning to the African American Summit Conference. My voice is a little tired as we were in or at Cornell University on Friday night, flew into Chicago yesterday, then flew down to New Orleans last night, spoke this morning, got on a plane, and here we are. We were blessed with overwhelming success in representing to our people a black agenda, an agenda that would lead our people successfully toward the 21st century. We only had about 45 minutes to speak because of the plane that we had to catch to be back here to meet with you. But the people mobbed us when we finished. They uh, broke to the rostrum and uh, I left the stage. I had lipstick <laughs> everywhere on my face, on my collar, on my clothes and uh, this was a demonstration of the love of the people and their gratitude for the word of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So we are pleased with Allah's blessings after so much controversy, some people didn't want me to be there. Some people who were black felt that if I came, they wouldn't come. This is terrible <laughs> that black people have a summit and are frightened by the presence of their own brothers and sisters. This shows that some of us still suffer from a slave mentality, that we cannot do things for black people. We have to think of which white person we are going to offend. If we sincerely want to see our people free. We are bound to offend those who oppress us to the degree that the oppressor controls us. It is to that degree that we lack offense to him. 
But the person who is not under his control is the most offensive of all. Well, I'm glad I have that distinction. Since uh, they do not control Brother Farrakhan, they are most offended because I am a free man. And a free man is dangerous to them because they cannot tell me what to say or how to say it. They cannot tell me where to go, who to associate with. A free man does as his good sense directs him. It is wonderful to be free. When you know the truth, it makes you free. When you understand the truth, then the truth becomes a weapon in your hand. It's one thing to know it yourself and to be free by that knowledge. But to understand the truth is to know how to use the truth as a weapon to ward off your enemies and awaken people by the thousands. You see? So we don't only want to know the truth, we want to become intelligent users of the truth. That we may not only free ourselves, but free our people. Now, at Cornell University on Friday night, we had an overwhelming success. Oh, a lot of protesters hollering and screaming about Farrakhan. But on the inside, the black students, the white students, cheering because they were beginning to understand. So Allah gave us another victory. But at the end of the evening, we had a question and answer session. And an Hispanic brother asked me a question about the black man. Because I told the white people who were present that they would rather say that they are the descendants of apes rather than admit that the black man and woman is their father and mother. Now, of course, I'm saying this in a college. I understand by God's grace the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and why these teachings must be spoken to white people, to yellow and brown people, to every human being on the earth. Everyone must know the black man. Because to know the black man is to know something of yourself. You cannot know the tree as well. If you just study the fruit, you must also study the root. Yes, sir. Now, we said to those students, historically speaking, anthropologically speaking, Genetically and biologically speaking, there is no human being on the earth that predates the black man and the black woman. Now, you might wish to argue, but there is no argument. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad asked us the question, who is 
the original man. And he gave us the answer. The original man is the Asiatic black man. The owner, the maker, the cream of the planet Earth, the God of the universe. Each word is important. Each word is truth. Each word is powerful. Because if we don't know ourselves, we don't know anybody else. Who is the original man? Notice in the answer, the word Africa never is mentioned. The original man is not the African black man. The original black man is the Asiatic black man. Owner, maker. Well, I thought that only slant-eyed persons who are yellow in color are Asians. Yes. I thought that we were in fact Africans. Yes. The argument today is whether we should be black or African American. In the lessons given to us by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I repeat, Africa is not mentioned, not in the student enrollment, but over in lesson number one, which I want all of you to become a part of this so you can get your assignments. The question is asked, why does the devil call our people Africans? Now he didn't say, why do we call ourselves Africans? Mm -mm. He said, why does the devil call our people Africans? Now by devil here, we mean the Caucasian people. Nobody under the ground getting ready to burn you after you are dead. The white man on top of the ground burning you while you are alive. The white race, Elijah Muhammad said, is a race of devils. I'm going to prove my point. I know I'm on the radio. I know that I'm on the radio, so this is not secret. <laughs> Why does the devil call our people Africans? The answer given by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the question raised by his teacher, Master Farad Muhammad. To make our people of North America believe that the people on that continent are the only people that we have and that they are all savage. Every time they show Africa, they attempt to show you our people in a savage condition. They want you and me to focus our minds on that continent and that continent alone. Listen, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the white man bought a trading post in the jungle of that continent. The original people live on this continent and they are the ones who strayed away from civilization and are living a jungle life. Now, many of our brothers and sisters who are called African, what you see in the tribes and in the splitting up of our family is the fact that we have strayed from the light of civilization. For Allah says in the Quran, I made you into tribes and families and nations that you may know one another and not despise one another. 
wherever you see a proliferation of many, many, many tribes of one people, then the people have lost the light of civilization because the light of civilization would cause an evolutionary motion in the people which would bring them from a tribe into a nation. When the white people or devils were in Europe, they had many tribal names. The Angles, the Saxons, the Vikings, the Goths, the Visigoths, right? All of these were names of tribes. But when the light of truth dawned on Europe, the Angles and the Saxons came together, the Celts and the Normans, huh? The Germanic tribes came together and they formed nations. So now in Europe, you hear no mention of tribal names. You hear England, France, Germany, Spain. But when you go to Africa, where they have the boundaries of a nation, you hear people paying more attention to their tribe than their nation. So there is a knowledge missing that would evolve them out of a tribal a development into a nation and a world. When you go among the Native Americans, you hear them saying, I am Sioux, I am Lakota, I am Dakota, I am Iroquois, I am Blackfoot, huh? I am Cree. All of these tribal names demonstrate that the knowledge is not present that would evolve them out of a tribe into one great family, diminishing tribal customs, tribal language, giving them national custom, national language. The white people who set up a trading post on the continent of, of, of what is called Africa, wanted us to believe that the people on that continent are the only people that we have. They do this to try to divide us. We have black people that have been all over this earth and have settled everywhere on the earth. You may not know it, but there are black people in China. Black people in Japan, black people in Korea, black people in India, black people in Australia, in Fiji, in New Zealand, in Australia, black people in Indonesia, in all of the islands there that they call Peloponnesia, in the Hawaiian Islands, blacks there. When you come to North America, we came here before Columbus. There's a sign that blacks were here in the Americas long before Christopher Columbus was even a thought in the mind of his father. When you argue over whether you should be African or African American, this betrays a lack of knowledge of self. Who was America named after? Amerigo Vespucci. An Italian before he was an Italian we were before white folk ever came into the light of the world we were what do we look like taking a name after a Johnny come lately like Amerigo Vespucci so, And, of course, for us to say African-American, this is a rather nationalistic, even racist kind of statement. 
If this whole Western Hemisphere is divided into three Americas, North America, Central America, South America, but nobody calls themselves an American but the people who live in the 50 states. You'll never go to Canada and find the Canadian calling himself a Canadian American. He's a Canadian. You will never go to Mexico and find the Mexican saying, I'm a Mexican Central American or a Nicaraguan Central American or a Costa Rican Central American or a Honduran or Panamanian Central American. I am a Panamanian. I am a Nicaraguan. I am a Guatemalan. I am a Costa Rican. Huh? No America. You go down to South America. They don't say, I am a Peruvian South American. I am a Peruvian. I am a Bolivian. I am a Chilean. Huh? I am a Brazilian. I am a Colombian. I am a Venezuelan. Nobody uses America but these who live in the 50 states. And how did you become an American? When did you become an American? Under what circumstances have you become an American? So to understand that it was a white man who named the continent of Africa, Africa. And we predated the white man. Then what was it called before the white man named it Africa? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the original people called the planet Asia. The whole planet was once called Asia. Not just that part over there that is called Asia today, but all of it was Asia. The part that you call Europe was called Asia. Some of the old maps called it Eurasia. We called it Euro. We know the meaning of those words. This was called West Asia. And we used it as a prison for the rebellious ones. We put them out from civilized society and banished them into what we call West Asia. So now, if we are the original inhabitants of the earth, and we are, and our color as the first creatures of Almighty God coming up out of darkness. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we take our color from the darkness out of which we originated. So we are black symbolizing that we are the first human beings and from us came all other human beings. That is the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And you, black man, and you, black woman, if there were no people before you, and you were the first of God's creation, then you are a direct descendant of the originator of the heavens and the earth. Therefore, the nature of God is your nature. And if you are left alone and fed properly, spiritually, mentally, morally, you will grow up into God himself. So the Bible in the book of Psalms said, ye are all God's children of the most high God. So for the white man to tell you that you're a Negro, a colored person, a ham bone, a shine, a burrhead. So, if you want to use the term African American, that is entirely up to you. But you should never use that term to negate yourself as a black person. Because it was blackness that brought us into consciousness in the 1960s. It's not just a color, it is a consciousness. It's not just a color, it is a calling. Huh? And white folks felt so threatened by our calling ourselves black 
and identifying with black people all over the world. He wanted to change us from calling ourselves black, so he subtly changed the name, called us minorities, the disadvantaged, the permanent underclass. Man, what are you talking about? We're not a minority. When you think of yourself as a black man, then you start counting all the black people on the earth and we become the majority outnumbering the white man 11 to 1. Let him call himself the minority. Now, you say this is racist teaching, some of the silly ones among you. You say this is a racist teaching. I say no, it is a truth teaching that is designed to bust up the mind of racism. Racism destroyed the black man's identity of self. Racism hid from the white man even the origin of his own civilization that began with black people. None of the scholars at Cornell or anywhere that I go argue with the teachings of Elijah Muhammad that Greek civilization is not the beginning of civilization. It all began in Africa and it all began with your fathers, black people. When I said to the white students, your fathers did you a disservice. They didn't tell you that the origin of mathematics, of science, physics, chemistry, medicine, law, philosophy, government, trade, commerce, navigation, engineering, all started with the black man. They don't argue because we can prove our point. So the Hispanic brother got up and raised the question. He said, sir, we could say that the black man has not evolved from his original state. If others came from the black man, they left him behind because others evolved. And the black man, it appears, has not evolved. We could say that. Well, what he was telling me is, you're trying to tell us that you all were first. I don't like that. So I'm going to throw this back at you. We could say that you people, black people, have not evolved yet from a primitive state. I said, sir, with all due respect, with all due respect, if we gave civilization to you and your fathers, you cannot say we had not evolved because we evolved you. Listen, listen. They are now unearthing civilizations under the sands in Africa that are more sophisticated and more developed show more signs of higher mathematics and law and science than the present world in which we live. The first wonder of this world is the pyramid and the sphinx. And the whole history of the world is written in the stones of the pyramid. Now think about this. White folk have yet to figure the pyramid out. The black man put it there, left it there, then put a black face on the body of a lion and set him out in the desert majestically, sent him there and then went on about his business and went to sleep. Listen, so that when white folk built their world, they would still have to go back to Egypt to find out where it all began and they would see this sphinx majestically sitting there, a black face on the body of a lion saying that I am the ruler. 
I am the lion. I am the king. I'm asleep, but I've left the sign that before you were, I am. And after you go, I shall be, for I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending of it all. Now, I've got to do this quickly. <laughs> now, brothers and sisters, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, what a masterful teacher. His teacher, Master Farad Muhammad, taught him <clears throat> about life on the other planets. And by studying the other planets, he could discern that the most intelligent life was on this planet called Earth or Asia. How do you determine the most intelligent life? By their level of experimentation. The more a people experiment, the greater their knowledge. The greater their knowledge, the more they approach the power and the expression of God. Do you follow me? The greatest experiments of all have been the experiments on self. To help man to know himself. Now, I want you young brothers and sisters to pay attention. This is not too heavy for you, but I want you to not miss a beat because it's going to get a little deep, but you all can make it. Come on and travel with your little brother. Now look, this book here called Quran and what you have at home called Bible, it is called Scripture, Scripture, but the Quran also is called Scripture, but the Quran has reference to the mother book, the mother book. Well, a mother is that which produces offspring. If scripture is a part of the writing, then the part is not the whole. When you see the Torah, you see a part of a writing. When you see the gospel, you see a part of the writing. When you see the Quran, you see a part of the writing. This scripture called Bible and Quran begins with Adam and his fall. And it ends with the destruction of the present world, the resurrection of the dead, and the beginning of a brand new world. But neither book, Bible or Quran, admits any of us into the new world. It just says these words, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of a man to conceive what is in the world beyond this one. The Quran calls this world a transitory life. What do you mean transitory life? This life that we're living now, this Negro life, this low life, this jive life, this life where you get up in the morning and don't know what your aim is or your purpose is, you never quite evolve into who you should be. You live and you die without ever realizing what God has put within. You dear mothers have your babies and weep and sorrow over your children 
because you are powerless to make your children great in a world that sucks them up. Huh? This is called a transitory life where the life of this world is but sport and play. But the life that was lived before this world came in was a higher form of life. And the life that will be lived after this world goes out is the elevated life. Life on a higher plane. It don't mean we're going to get up and fly away into the sky. It only means that you're going to live a higher form and expression of the same life that you now have. Why then is there such a thing as a devil? I mean, God is wise. Why would he allow a devil? Religious scholars don't like to say that God made devil. Well, if God created everything and there's nothing that he didn't create, if there is a devil, he didn't have an independent creation, God had something to do with the devil. Come on. Well, why did God make devil? What was his purpose? Allowing a devil. Let's look at this. Y'all ready? Yes, sir. Get on your diving suit now. We're going to go down a little bit. We're going to come up before anybody gets the bends. we we'll come up slowly. But look at this. In everything in creation, there is the opposite in existence. In the atom, you find the positive and the negative. Is that right? In the atom. Well, if we are made up of what? Come on. Atoms. Molecules. Are also atoms. Is that right? These atoms are in motion, aren't they? Come on. You don't see your skin moving looks pretty firm to you but you are composed of atoms huh? now if we physically are composed of atoms and in every atom there is the positive and the negative then there is in us as the original people the potential for great good but there is also the potential for great evil. It is all in us. You ready? Now, as long as the negative is controlled by the positive, then the negative does not get a chance to display itself. But when the positive is eliminated, then the negative can come forward. Each one of us, now let me just give you an example. Each one of us can wake up real happy, positive frame of mind. Have you gotten up like that some mornings? You look around and say, man, it's a great day. What happened, man? How you feel? Why do you feel? Hey, hey. I hit the lottery. <laughs> great day, great day. Feel good, feel good. Where's your numbers? Oh, I remembered them. Now it's time to cash in. Where did I put that ticket? <laughs> if you can't find the ticket, that's a negative happening. <laughs> There's an immediate mood change. <laughs> Your baby comes in the room. Morning, Daddy. Hi, Daddy. Shut up, boy. <laughs> Get out of here with that noise. You see, I'm busy. <laughs> wow. 
wife come in, what's the matter with you? And what's the matter with you? <laughs> in the twinkling of an eye, you've changed. The sparkle in your eye is gone. <laughs> Just that quick, you change from a positive, loving, caring, kind person to a mean, ugly, cantankerous person that will do some evil now. Now mind you, there ain't no devil in the room, just you. Can you dig it? I just, excuse me, I don't mean to be hip, but can you dig it? Look now. And the youngest one out here can get mean and do mean things. Well, where did that come from, man? Came right up from out of you. Do you mean that the devil is an opposite or opposing force within the human being? Yes, you could say that. But it does not become a devil until it is given form and expression. It is always present, but when you give it expression, then you become what you are now expressing. Listen, listen, please. Look. How many of you, you don't have to raise your hand because it's embarrassing. How many of you have ever, sisters, seen another sister that you feel is real pretty? Prettier than you. More shapely than you. And it's kind of showing off around the boyfriend that you hope to get. <laughs> you at the party or the dance and here she comes. Hi. <laughs> oh, why don't that doggone girl just sit down? What come over you? What motivated you to talk like that? She thinks she's so cute. She just makes me sick. So you might take your punch and accidentally stumble and spill it on her dress. Oh, I'm so sorry, but you ain't sorry. You know exactly what you were doing, and under your breath you said, that'll prick so on it. <laughs> and she's mortified because this stuff has dropped all down her beautiful dress, and she's feeling wet and embarrassed. Every devil wants to give himself a good name. Ain't nobody in the church but you, yet the church can't get together. Nobody in the mosque but us. And if we can't get together, where's the devil? There's a devil in here, there sure is. Where's the devil? He came in in you. Because as long as you live on this earth, there's gonna be positive and negative influences. And when you give yourself over to a negative influence, you become negative. And the more you focus on the negative, the more you become the negative. And as the negative is opposed to the positive, that's what makes a devil. The devil is an opposer of good. Now, I said the white man is not a devil, but the devil. That's what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us. Now, is he right? Is he wrong? We need to understand him. You gonna bear with me a few minutes? 
I got to tie all these little points together. And I want to keep you long because I'm just as tired as you are. Look. Here's an experiment. The people seem like they gravitate toward the negative sometimes. Have you ever noticed that? Right now, if I started preaching real holiness and righteousness, people say, hey, hey, my man, I have something else to do. I got to mix the teachings with humor, with life experience, just to keep you interested because if I don't, you won't accept it because nobody in this world really wants to be right. We really have been made lovers of evil. Now, how many of you believe that there is a God? Let's see your hands if you believe there's a God. Okay. I do too. I believe there's a God. But listen. Have you ever wondered if there is a God? Why don't he intervene and stop some of this madness that's going on? Have you ever thought about it? When you see war breaking out, people dying, slaughtered, famine, pestilence, flooding, everything going on, disaster, you say, oh God, where are you? Why don't you step in? Why don't you do something? And the God looks like he just folds his hands. It's interesting, the Pope, he's supposed to be his holiness. He's praying for peace and there's more war, you know what I mean? And that God don't even listen to the Pope. You know? All these holy dudes get together and pray. God stop this. God pours it on them more. It appears. Have you ever begun to wonder? What, what, what is God? Why does God do this? He's a wise God. We are so rebellious. Your mothers will tell you, son, I've been in the world longer than you. Now listen to me. I know your friend so-and-so. I know he's your good friend, but I'm telling you, he's not good company for you to keep. And I would prefer that you not keep company with so-and-so. I saw that boy the other day. He was cussing like a sailor, and I saw a little white stuff in his hand. I think that boy's selling drugs. Oh, ma, oh, ma, you, 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 you trying to just pick my friends for me, ma. Or you'll say, yes, ma, I know he's selling drugs. I will not hang out with him anymore. You slip out the back door and you and him is together doing drugs. You get caught. They got you downtown in some cell. Who you sending for? Mother. Ma, you know, I went out the back door, but he came by. And he just asked me to get in the car. Ma, I, 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 you know, you trying to <laughs> fix that lie up? I didn't know he had drugs. I didn't know what he was going to do. I didn't know. I didn't know. Ma, the bail is what? 25000 Ma, can you get me out? Can you get me out? Ma, I swear. Ma, if you just get me out of this, Ma, I, I'll never, I'll never. How many of you have said, talked like that? If you just get me out of this, either you talk to your mother or you talk to God. You get in some trouble that you know only God could get you out of. And then you lay that hype on God. Oh, God. 
I mean, can't you pray then? Boy, you fall down on your knees. You really get it right now. God. If you just help me through this, God, I'll never, never, never do it. And I'll serve you for the rest of my days. I promise, I promise, I promise. The minute God gets you out of that gym, you seem to forget his number. You don't call him up no more. <laughs> You're back in the same ditch again. So God is wise. When you try to incline or incline to rebelliousness, God sometimes will step back from you and allow your rebelliousness to run its course where it beats you down so bad that you will say, God, please, I surrender. You know how they say, put your hands up? Come on out with your hands up. When you see a Muslim stand up for prayer and you hear him say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, God is great. How you know he's great? Because I tried everything I could. <laughs> So look, God, I surrender. I ain't fighting you no more. I submit to the Lord of the world. But in order to make you submit, God sometimes has to beat you all the way down. Now, with that as a base, I want to go back to Cornell to what I told the white students. Anthropologically, a Dr. Leakey went to find the origin of man. Where did he go? Africa. Did he find the origin of man? Yes. Who did Dr. Leakey say was the first man on the earth? Did he say it was a white man, a yellow man, a brown man? Who did he say it was? Black man. So the white anthropologists agree, right? Wait now. How many of you have ever studied biology? Raise your hands high. Don't be bad. Come on. Okay. Thank you. Now there's a man in biology. His name is Mendel. He's a Caucasian. I never met him. But Mendel was studying the genetic makeup. And Mendel said, dark skin is dominant. Light skin is recessive. Dominant means strong. Recessive means weak. Mendel said, light eyes are recessive. Dark eyes are dominant. Recessive means weak. Dominant means strong. Then Mendel went on to say, you can get the recessive from the dominant, but you cannot get the dominant from the recessive. What was Mendel saying? That if two white people were the first people on earth, we never could have come here. Because the white man cannot produce a black man. Is that right? All right. So if the white man cannot produce the black man, talk to me now, then this means that we Black people can produce the whole human family. Does the Bible and Quran bear witness to that? Yes. The Bible says from one blood came all living things. One blood. 
came all human beings. One blood. Blood is the life fluid of some living creature. If you are the original man, then you are the blood that produced every human being on the earth. That must be told. It must be said from the mountaintops because the whole world looks down on the black man and woman. The whole world crushes the black man and woman. So if we are going to end racism, we have to end race and bring all back to the father, back to the beginning that we become a nation, but you cannot become a nation until you get into oneness with the root. All right. White folks, when they heard this, I mean, you could see them squirming. <laughs> turning little different colors. But I kept driving my point home. Look, if you got a seed of a rose, plant the rose. The rose will come up a certain color. I got a rose bush out on the property in Phoenix. Most beautiful rose you've ever seen. We cut the roses and put them on the dining room table. And you know what? We have white rose, yellow rose, red rose, pink rose. Wait a minute. All of that come from one rose seed? Yeah. But those who work with seeds have been grafting and producing other different colors. Come on. Some of them is not the original thing. They are produced. They're called hybrids. That's right. Come on. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. Now look. If the white man does not call himself a native nothing. That's right. Think about it. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Are you asleep or you awake? Yes. Who's the Native American? White is not a native. Who's the native African or so-called African? Come on. Who's the native Asian? Who's the native Australian? Who's the native of South America? If the white man is not a native nowhere on the earth, that means he's not natural to the earth, then the question must be asked, where did he come from? Y'all all right? Yes, now, if you cross a lemon, I think, and an orange, you can get what? A what? A who? A grapefruit. The lemon been here. The orange has been here. But when you cross them, you begin to get something new. Is that right? The donkey been here. The horse been here. When you cross the donkey and the horse, you get what? A mule. Big old dumb stubborn thing. <laughs> any resemblance to any persons in the audience is quite a coincidence. <laughs> if God can make men and with enough knowledge and science to take a created thing then make from the created thing something that is from it but not necessarily like it 
then that is a made thing from the created thing. If the white man is not natural anywhere on the earth and we are natural in every part of the earth, then where did the white man come from? As God brought light out of darkness, darkness was here first. Then God said, let there be light and found light in darkness and brought it out. The first five books of Moses, Moses begins talking to the children of Israel in these words. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. See the opposites. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and God said, let there be light. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, heaven and earth. God said, let there be light. Now there's light and darkness. And one part called the firmament, earth, the other part called heaven. One part he called night, the other part he called day. We're dealing now with the duality. Is that right? Yes, sir. God tells you right there, one cannot exist in the place while the other one is, is there. Darkness doesn't exist when light comes. When light comes, darkness goes. When darkness comes, light goes. They do not coexist. Mm. Moses was teaching his people their origin in the world. I'm almost finished. Now let's go back to this scripture and the mother book. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that wise black scientists, the book of Revelation said there's 24 of them, make Bible and Quran history to last for 25 years thousand years a year for every mile in accord with the circumference of the earth the earth is 24,896 miles so when we write Bible or Quran it is written in advance for 25,000 years and put in a vault whenever a part of what is written is to be fulfilled one of the major scientists will raise up from among the people what is called a prophet and give him a part of the writing. He's only concerned with his part. There's a whole 25,000 years of history. This man only has a part of the writing. Now, brothers and sisters, in the year one of this present cycle of history, which is approximately 16,000 years ago, the scientists saw one coming who would make a devil from the original people. When they brought it back to the one judge who is Allah, Allah could say, let it be or we will not permit it. But whenever God says, let it be, his word is be and it is. In the Quran, Allah don't give nobody credit for producing color. He takes the credit himself. He said, I gave the rocks their hue. I give people or man their hue. But how he does it, he doesn't say. But if a human being comes up, with the idea to make a people other than the original people from the original people you can look at that human being but that human being is only a causative agent of God's will for God has already said let it be in the Quran the angels are talking with God and God said, I'm going to place a ruler in the earth. And the angels say, what will you place in it? 
but that which will create mischief and cause the shedding of blood. Allah said, I know what you know not. Now, brothers and sisters, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that a black man was born 20 miles outside of the holy city of Mecca. And when he was a young boy, about six years old, he was playing in the sand with two pieces of metal. And he saw one piece of metal drawing the other piece of metal under its power. And there he discovered the law of unlike attract and like repel. And he said to his uncle, when I grow up, I'm going to make a people to rule you. And the uncle said, what will you make? But that which will create mischief and cause the shedding of blood. And the little boy said, I know what you know not. Now in that is an allegory in which is contained the truth. There are young people today coming right up among us that have vision for tomorrow that will blow their parents' minds. And they start talking to their elders and the elders say, child, where did you get that? Because the parent knows it didn't teach the child what the child is speaking. But the child comes out with it naturally because the child is born to do something. And what it is born to do is wrapped up in its genetic makeup. And it just takes circumstances to bring out what is in. Do you understand? Look. There's a little disfigured boy that was on television. He plays the piano. Anything he hears, he can play it. His brother played the piano and the child was a year and a half old. And he's listening to his brother. Now the child is hearing his brother play. The brother is the causative agent to help the child discover itself. Do you follow what I'm saying? The little child finds his way to the piano and begins to pick out the melody that his older brother was playing and he's less than two years old. So the parents, the boy's head was disfigured. His face was not beautiful. The parents thought, oh, why didn't the child die? It's so terrible that we were saddled with this kind of child. The mother heard the piano playing. She thought it was her older son. She goes down. It's the baby sitting at the piano. Now the boy is about six. His feet can't reach the pedal but anything that he hears he can play he don't have any teacher where did it come from it comes up out of the child because he's born to do what he's doing but circumstances will bring him to his life's work do you follow me Yaqub was six years old playing with two pieces of metal. He saw one piece drawing the other piece under its power. Immediately, something comes up out of him. He's going to do something big one day. They send him to school. He learns everything there is to learn and finishes school at 18. He's in the laboratory studying the life germ. And he discovers that in the germ of the black man, there's a brown germ and a black germ. He discovers the positive and the negative. He discovers this thing operating in our being. And what he said was, if I can separate this brown germ from the black germ and graft it into its final stage, I could produce a people unalike. 
And because they would be unalike, they could be attractive. And if I teach them how to master their own uh, original people, then I will make a master. Now, brother and sister, Yaqub, when he became 18, he went to work. And he started teaching and getting followers there in Mecca. And as he began to teach, people began to listen to him. The authorities got really vexed. And the more they persecuted Yaqub, the more his followers grew until they put him in jail. And when they put him in jail, the teaching was still going on in the streets. So finally, the wise one said, we've read about him in the history. He was in jail under an alias. When they went to the jail, the king called him Mr. Yaku, and in words said, look, we know that you are the one that has to do this work. What do you want? He said, you give me my people and allow me to leave and take my people with me. So then agreement was made and he took his followers. There were 59,999 of them with Yaku making 60,000. And they were banished to an island in the Aegean Sea called Pilan. But in the Bible it is called Patmos. And there on the island of Patmos, Yaqub began to make a devil. How do you make devil? What are the steps that you make? You start by grafting, by separating the germs. You start by setting up a law of birth control. Yaqub had helpers to help him produce his new people. He had a doctor, a nurse, a minister, and a cremator. I'm coming back to you in a minute. This may sound far-fetched, but boy, when you see it. Yaqub told the ministers, Before anyone comes to you to marry, they got to go to the doctor. And the doctor will take a sampling of their blood. Sound familiar? If two black ones come, tell them their blood doesn't make it quite right, they have to go back. Don't give them an okay to the minister. The minister is not to marry two that look alike. He must find the unalike and marry the unalike so that a dark one must marry someone just a little lighter than self. Unalike. That's the law. Take the sampling of the blood. If they're unalike, say, well, you can go on to the minister. The minister will marry them if they're unalike. But right away, you got to get married at 16. You got to start producing babies. Yaqub wanted babies. If a real black child was born, the object was to kill the black and save the lighter child. Then marry the lighter on to a lighter and keep on grafting until you produce a brown civilization of people. Birth control. Kill the black, save the brown. Marry the brown on to a lighter brown, kill the darker, save the lighter, 
marry the lighter on to the lighter till the darker save the lighter until you bring it to its apex which is this that you see this caucasian caucasian mean weak blooded weak bone stale face that pale what the indian call a pale man huh? Brother, I am not playing. This is serious. The white man is not the real man. He's a made human being from you. When they want to go in the laboratory to develop medicine for their disease, they don't practice on gray mice. What do they practice on? Come on. What color mice? White mice. Is the white mouse a natural mouse? Uh oh, where did the white mouse come from? From the gray mouse. So Whitey uses something that already is a hybrid to demonstrate what happens on this. Maybe if it can affect that white mouse, it can also affect me. Do you hear me? Now he's here. On the way, it took 600 years to take him from black all the way to white. First, there was a brown civilization. And you got them out there now, they're called Japanese. They come right up out of that grafting. The next civilization, next 200 years, you had a yellow man. And those yellow and brown, they don't get along. China and Japan may look the same to you, but they know they're different and they clash with each other. And out of the Chinese came the Caucasian, or the yellow man came the Caucasian. These are new people. You can't take the brown man or Japanese back beyond 6,000 years. You can't take the white man beyond 6,000 years. You can't take the uh, yellow man beyond 6,000. All their history is 6,000 years old. It's the original people that have no birth record. None whatsoever. Now, look, making people of color, that's not sin. That's wisdom. Like making different color flowers or different color um, or kinds of fruit or different kinds of animal life. That's a test of your wisdom. Making different kinds of human beings is a test of the wisdom of God. God said, let it be, bring them forward. Yaqub then had to teach them a teaching that would oppose the teachings of God. They already are opposite us in color and opposite us in nature. Why do you say that? If murder was going on on the island of Patmos to produce them and lying was going on to fool the baby away from the mother, kill the darker, save the lighter, then Jesus says in the New Testament, I know you, talking to the Jews, you are of your father the devil. He was a liar and a murderer. And if you look at that white man, he's a lion thing and a murderous human being. There is no human being on earth that has murdered more living things than the Caucasian. He's a murderer and a liar. Take it or leave it, brother. I'm not saying that we don't lie, but the white man lies almost for no reason at all. Come on. A liar and a murderer. Now he was taught by Yaqub how to master us with a system of tricks and lies. And that boy is the same today as he was. He's full of tricks. Come on. Got you doing it. He's a tricky dude. He can't help himself. A liar, a murderer, a deceiver. Now, when he was made, 
he was allowed to come back among the holy people. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us that in six months he turned the Holy Land upside down. And we rounded up all of them that we could find and drove them out into the hills and caves of Europe. This is where you get in your Masonic order the cable tow. We took everything from the white man <laughs> but the language. Stripped them naked so when you join the lodge you get a little apron and they tie you together and we beat him every step of the way so when you join the lodge they call it crossing the burning sands and they whoop your backside like our fathers whipped them driving them out that's written in the bible and in the quran get out of it despised and driven away caucasians and brother they've been angry with us ever since they went into europe and went savage. That's right. <laughs> EU means hillsides and caves. And R-O-P-E is the rope to bind in. We sent him up there and bound him in. So he couldn't get out of Europe. And the man went savage. Tried to graft himself back and got as far as the ape. Right. Right. Not that he came from the ape, the ape came from him. That's his brother. And you hear him say, well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. He know what he's talking about. <laughs> oh, brother. He lived in the caves of Europe for 2,000 years, walking on his all fours. Let me tell you something. You notice how the white man take off his shirt? You see all his hair look like a blanket covering him? Come on now. Some of you sisters, you like to look at that naked beast. See him out there parading on the beach? Chest, you don't find chest, just hair. All down his arm, everywhere. You say, well, how come I don't have that? You look at your chest, you can hardly find a hair. You look at the white man, he's head down. Where, where did this come from? Came from his days in the cave. Have you ever put on a cast on your arm? And let it stay there for three months? When you take it off, what do you see under there? Come on. What do you see? A lot of it, right? Not on the arm that didn't have the cast, but on the arm that got the cast. Why? Because wherever it is dark and damp, where you get no sunlight, you will grow an inordinate amount of hair. Here's a white man living in the cave. It's there in the 18th chapter of the Quran called the cave and at the mouth of the cave is a dog say if there are two of them the third was the dog if there was three of them the fourth was the dog if there was five of them six was the dog and when you see the white man today who is the white man's best friend it ain't you it ain't God it's a dog brother <laughs> Him and the dog have a love affair. He cohabits with the dog. Moses had to tell him, look, if we catch you sleeping with an animal, death. Because white folks so crazy, they lie down with the dog, lie down with the sheep, lie down with the cow. If you want to join my Telegram group, please go to my description box, click on the Telegram link. Uh, it will take you to the platform. Join us for us to discuss about the well-being of Africa and Africans in diaspora. If today is also your first time coming to this channel, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification button so that anytime 
I upload any great content, you will be notified. I'm always your guy, Digraft Amuako. Thanks for watching.